Hi, nice to see you again and we start unit number two in hybrid political science. And this unit will specialize or focus on um, political parties and special interest groups. And we're going to look at a short video today uh, or a voiceover on a PowerPoint. It's a virtual lecture on uh, parties and candidates. So I'll minimize my picture right now and you can continue to listen to me as I talk about parties and candidates. There's three different party systems that I want to talk about today. The first party system is the one party system, and that's the same as communism. A one party system is where the party is the same thing as the government. Now, occasionally, one party systems look uh, are religious based, and those are theocracies. But for the most part, when you think of a one party system, I want you to think about it as as communist, such as China, um, Vietnam, Cuba, North Korea. The second is a two-party system, and that's the United States. Um, Spain also has a two-party system, but for the most part, we think of the United States as a two-party system. Now, what you need to remember is in a two-party system, there are multiple parties, but only two main parties. I really want you to remember that. Multiple parties, but two main or major parties. The history of the two-party system in the United States is the three um, eras. The first era is the Federalists versus the Democrat Republicans. Remember, the Federalists were the same folks that wanted the Constitution. Shortly after that, during Andrew Jackson's period, um, it evolved into the Democrats versus the Whigs. So the Federalists went away, and the Democrats um, became known as, or the Democrat Republicans became known as the Democrats, and a new party formed called the Whigs. And at, during the Civil War in 1860s, um, uh, a new party emerged um, when slavery became an issue. Basically, it boiled down to um, the Democrats and um, folks who wanted slavery uh, stuck together, and then the Whigs and some uh, non-slavery Democrats joined together and became the Republicans. That's where you got the Democrats versus Republicans. And that two-party system has uh, survived since the Civil War. And the last uh, type of multi-party uh, system is the multi-party system. Now, just like the two-party system, the multi-party system has multiple parties, but there are many major parties. There's not there's more than two main parties. The reason that you have multi-party systems is you have multiple ideologies, but in order to pass any laws, since you need a majority of the votes, they have to form coalitions. And I want you to remember that a coalition is when parties form together to create a, a coalition, to create a, a union that provides a majority so they can pass laws. That's an important definition that I want you to remember. Multiple ideologies or multiple groups that um, join together to create a majority to be able to pass laws. Now coalitions are difficult to maintain because those coalitions don't agree in the first place. So they have to find ways for them, for them, to, for, for them to be able to agree. There are also other, um, within the two-party system, you have third parties. Now remember, we said that there are multiple, multiple parties in a two-party system, but there are only two major parties. Well, what about those other parties, those minor parties? Those third parties are, there's three types of third, third parties in the United States. There are single-issue parties, there are ideological parties, and there are splinter parties. Single issue parties like the Prohibition Party were only established to, to fulfill or meet one objective. Then you have, like, um, for example, for Prohibition, they wanted to get rid of uh, alcohol consumption. You have ideological parties that, are, that exist because of a philosophical or an ideology, such as the Libertarians uh, or the Communists or the Socialists. And then you have splinter parties that are parties that split away from the major party because the major party or the main party isn't able to achieve the goals of the group within that party. So that group splits away. Um, in this case, the, the best known is the Bull Moose Party or Progressive Party when Teddy Roosevelt split from the Republican Party because they weren't able to meet their needs. And so they created a new party. Unfortunately, that split the Republican vote and the Democrats won. So these splinter parties don't help the main party. Parties are also interesting because they're not centralized. Um, in other words, the local, rural, or, or precinct, or county uh, aren't any more or less important than national committee. Um, they have different roles and different functions, uh, but they're all 
they all join together in order to be able to get their candidate elected. That's the main thing is to get their car, their party's candidates elected. So the lowest level, so to speak, although there's no hierarchy here, are the precincts, and that's the neighborhood level. That's the lowest level is the precinct level. Now, the political parties serve six functions. Function number one is to recruit candidates. It's the most important thing that political parties do are to recruit, select, and get their candidate elected. Now, when they're campaigning, their, their effort is to be able to educate the public about their candidate and about the platform that the party stands for. Now remember, a political party also serves as a linkage institution. They're connecting the people with government. The third function of a political party is to operate government. Those legislators that work in those parties work to support positions and platforms and issues and to try to get those uh, into, made into public policy and they link the different branches of government. The fourth is to dispense patronage. Dispensing patronage is nothing more than giving favors to people who supported the party or supported the candidate. A lot of times patronage is dispensed by getting jobs in government. So if I helped somebody get elected, they might, once elected, help me get a job in government. Loyal opposition. That's the fifth role of a political party. They're the watchdogs, so when one party makes a mistake or do something that they disagree with and they think it hurts the country, they'll tell the constituents, they'll tell the voters, uh oh, look what this party did, it wasn't good for the country. And you'll see that all the time between the parties where, um, for example, right now if President Obama does something that is perceived as being bad, um, the other party will point it out and try to get the voters to agree with them that it was a bad decision on the part of the party. And the last uh, function of government is the reduction of conflict. They encourage the groups to compromise and work together so that they can pass laws. This is the pluralist model, the idea that although there are multiple interests, those interests can compromise and come together to get a policy passed and create a peaceful transition of power. Now there's four ways to nominate or find a candidate. The first one are caucuses. That's the old way that was from years ago where um, the political bosses would get together in closed rooms and backdoor uh, meetings where if you want to imagine them smoking cigars and sitting back there talking about uh, who they want to pick and then they're controlling who the candidate's going to be. Well that was considered very um, uh, private and didn't include the, um, the grassroots people or the public in the decision, so they expanded it into a nominating convention. These were open meetings where names could be forwarded and it was an open selection process. Unfortunately, the political bosses still controlled that process. They still got who they wanted. Most states currently use a primary system where you go prior to the election date and vote for the candidate that you want to represent you from your party. There's two types of primaries. One is an open primary where you can vote on either side, either the Democrats or Republicans or for whatever party you want. Um, the unfortunate part about open um, primaries is that if you cross over, so to speak, if I was a Republican and I cross over and voted for a Democrat, I would probably be doing that in order to select a weaker candidate from the Democratic side so that my Republican candidate could have a better chance of winning. So most states are closed primaries to stop that from happening. Closed primaries are where you have to pre-register as uh, in, within a party and then you can vote for that whoever you want from that party to be your candidate. Last but not least, in some, part, in some uh, elections you can have a petition where you try to get as many signatures as needed to get your name on the ballot. This is often used in local elections like city councils or mayors uh, where you uh, it, oftentimes it isn't a, a partisan campaign. In other words, you don't run as a candidate from a party. You just run as an in, independent voter or independent candidate and you just need to get um, a certain number of signatures in order to be uh, placed on the ballot. Now remember, when you're done watching this, it is a lengthy video, it's 10 minutes long. Um, feel free to go back, watch it again, restart it and stop it to get what you need to be successful in understanding um, the structure of political parties and how candidates are selected and the functions of political parties. Thanks.